I am worried about how many females are actually pregnant. <laughs> it doesn't look very good. Back to the, hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Centers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Got the bulk feeder just filled up, and uh, it's been with my um, feeder bulls. But now I'm gonna take it to um, Dunbar and the Dunbar herd. Um, so um, we're gonna head out in the pasture, um, and this is part of this is something I do every year for about a month and a half or so. But this is a uh, my pushing of the females and. Uh, try to maybe the word is a good word is called flush maybe uh to flush these uh females and uh get them really going right now and plus we're running out of grass because uh it hasn't rained in a long time and it's dry and so i'm getting the feeling of last summer again so uh, it'll give them a little boost uh in the middle of the summer when it's hot and uh help push those females some so anyways let's go ahead and touch The original herd. Hello, everybody. Bellstar, looking plump still. God, what have you been eating? You got a calf too. Jeez, girl. You guys are about to be real happy. Dunbar. Eleanor, Quapa, calf. Guys, this is really hard to do with the phone in your hand. This thing. Get this contraption of locks and chains. Okay. Everybody. There he is. Big guy. What are you doing, Dunbar? Kit. Glad everybody's doing good. Don't get hot today, buddy. Stay hydrated. Eleanor! Oh, what do you guys smell? You smell the good stuff, don't you? Yeah. It's a big treat for y'all. Big treat. Why are you coming in the pasture? Come on, Pokey. Come on, let's go. Maya, I just cleaned that. Glad you feel better. Now well, they figured it out. Here come 
Some more. Uh. Oh yeah, look at him. He knows what the big green feeder is. Yeah, he's pumped. Here comes one of the cows, grand champion heifer. Here comes princess. Here come the rest. there did you oh you're gonna These guys are super excited to have the green feeder back. They know when they see that big green feeder coming down here and coming in the pasture, they get super excited. As you can tell, they're running. And once they figure it out, hey, we can go around and, and get to it, they were after it. So, so how this will work is, uh, you see there's a couple of them lingering around here. That's These, uh, these are on the lower end of the uh, pecking order. And so the, the dominant ones will go there first. Obviously, this is just how it goes. And uh, I watch this every year. But, um, and then the younger ones, like little, I call her a little heifer right here. And Eleanor, see those three right here. They'll eventually make their way in after they've had their fill. They will walk away. And then the others on the bottom of the pecking order can come in and eat theirs. And uh, yeah, so this is a uh, flow over here. She came with Big Joe and Kit. Uh, many years ago when we got Big Joe. She's got the one horn. So uh, that's kind of how that'll go. And that's okay because that's what's great about the cell feeder and bison. Uh, you can do this with bison and um, they, won't, they won't indulge themselves. They won't uh, overeat essentially and uh, blow and do all that. They may have the runs for a little bit, uh, but that's just part of it when you start feed. And, uh, but they regulate their appetite. And so they'll come eat, they'll go back and graze. And so it takes a little bit of stress and pressure off of the pasture right now, off of the grass, puts it, you know, they can, they can eat. So like I explained before we brought it down here, this is something, a, a tool I learned from uh, Doc Parsons over at uh, my guy um, in Stratford, Oklahoma. Uh, where I got Dunbar from my first five. If you're just now joining us, I got my first five from Gerald Parsons. He's a vet up in Stratford. I do a lot of stuff with him. We may be going on a visit to Stratford here pretty soon to hang out with um, Doc Parsons' herd. So well, I'll keep you updated. That. And that's not a guarantee, but we've talked about it. I may go up there and visit them. Uh, and um, the, my point is, is I learned this from him. And, and uh, it's just a little strategy you can do to try to push these females and try to make sure that they're healthy and you're trying to flush them to uh to get ready for breeding season some of them maybe are coming in heat already it's that june uh really here july august mark and uh, if we hit those july and august marks that means that we'll have 
babies typically in May, which, you know, I've stressed my concern here recently over that recent baby from the 32 cal to Ponderosa being built right in the middle of summer where we're having 98, 99 degree days. And that's hard on a young, weak or two old calf. I'm not saying they can't handle it. They've handled it in nature uh, for hundreds of years. Um, it's a little different when they're in a pasture, uh, I think. But so that's why I keep an eye on them, uh, on the young ones when they're that young, dealing with the heat. So uh, luckily there's trees and we got ponds. So there's ways for them to cool off. But uh, it's just a, it's, it's a thing and we're gonna have to go out and check them almost daily and make sure that little, dog, that little red dog is good. If he's as old as these are, which uh, these guys were born in May, I'm not worried uh, about them as much. So um, anyways, that is a, a blend, basically a feed that is called the DNH blend made from uh, the Dylan Page uh, Bucking Bull stock, uh, Bucking Bull Company, um, not too far from here, just, um, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes from here actually. And they raised Bucking Bulls and they created this feed and I actually get it here local. So uh, it's got a lot of good protein in it and uh, soy, uh, some gluten, uh, lots of good mixture of stuff. Um, that I feed the bison. So anyways, there you go. There you go, guys. I'm going to head uh, to the Ponderosa. I got some more stuff to do over there um, now that I got these guys taken care of. And um, we'll catch you up over there. See you guys. Hey, girl. You'll get some feed in a little bit. Just be patient, I promise. Hey, I brought you some cubes the other day. Now you got feed. I do uh, kind of have a interesting dilemma though I was gonna chat with you about and let you know about is uh, one of the things that I'm a little worried about is not with these guys but I am worried about how many females are actually pregnant uh, at the Dunbar herd place so what we did last year is in June we switched Dunbar and put Big Joe in with the herd and brought Dunbar up. In the past, Dunbar has done his job and he has bred, like I think last year was the most babies we had. We had eight or nine maybe, and um, that was the best we've done. But this year when we put Big Joe in there, now he's only been used to having two cows with him. You know, he had Flo and Kit when I got him several years ago, and now we put Big Joe in there, we brought Dunbar up for uh, the breeding season of 2021. We saw him, you know, escorting and following him along and, and doing all that stuff or during the rut. And then you won't know your answer if you bred him until, uh, you know, now. And uh, unfortunately, there's only three over there. And so Dunbar actually could have bred him before. I'm not sure. Uh, I got Kit, Peaches, and Bell Star. And so one of the things that I'm worried about is did Big Joe do his job? Um, and it's a serious thing that Kevin and I are talking about and uh, it, That's kind of a question and so Big Joe obviously uh, Has had babies in the past with Kit and Flo. We got both of his babies last year off of them too Everything was fine. So this year we wanted to get his get him out with some different cows uh, with Part of my original herd quapaws and, and and those and to see how you would do and so far it doesn't look very good, uh, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not very happy about it, but it's looking like w uh, we only may have three babies at the Dunbar herd. And uh, so I'm not sure. It kind of raises some questions on Big Joe. Right now, he's been following a cow around here for about two weeks, which tells me she's in heat. Um, and it's very hard to catch them to get them to see if they breed. Obviously, they're out doing their thing and and uh, we're living life and, and working and whatnot, so you can't always watch them and see if they do breed them. Uh, you won't know until you get a preg check, uh, which is in the fall, uh, which we've got to do that this year. We didn't do it last year. Uh, we got to get a preg check this year um, to see. 
other than that uh, you don't know until they hit the ground and right now it's not looking good um, I've talked about you know how I don't like them having calves this time of the year because it's so hot um, it's gonna be a hundred all this week here in Oklahoma over a hundred and uh, so it is a kind of worry and he's got four cows with him right now uh, big Joe does he's he's way down here in the pasture but uh, it kind of worries me. I don't know what will happen, so um, we may have to get him checked, to be honest with you. We may have to get Big Joe checked to see uh, if he's sterile. I don't know. He's obviously had babies before, and uh, we'll see uh, We'll see how that goes from here on out. And, and those babies are actually at uh, Mom and Kevin's place, at the Dunbar Herd place up at the front. Um, we feed them, and they graze and do all that stuff. So we have uh, two of his babies there, and um, you won't know. And then also I can uh, pull blood on him, uh, or sorry, we can pull hair off of calves, off these calves, and, and then get them sent to UC Davis, and you can get them registered, and you can find out their parent uh, lineage that way. That takes a long time, can take a long time. There's a couple of things we can do to find out who the dad is, but... Uh, that's the number one way is to pull hair when you get them in a squeeze chute, send it to UC Davis, and then you just wait on results. So that may be an option for us uh, to find out if those three babies over there are Big Joes um, or they're Dunbars at the Dunbar herd place. So anyways, that is a concern I'm worried about and um, for our future too as well, Big Joes future. So it is a uh, as a bison producer, you want to have as many babies as possible. Healthy babies with a healthy mama. Um, and, of course, you want a large production. Um, well, this year is not very good. We have the two Texas cows that came in, we had no control over that when I bought them. I, I was hoping they'd be pregnant. But over there at the Dunbar place, you know, we, uh, we tried to put Big Joe in there and create uh, some different things. And... Uh, we may be punished for that basically may not have a good feedback so anyways we'll keep you up to date with that and then we'll know more in the fall because we'll we'll have them come up we'll work the calves uh and maybe i'll talk to doc about uh, big joe being sterile possibly i don't know maybe he's not getting the job done so anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video getting to see dunbar and the original herd and eleanor and all them and they're doing great and they're happy now they got the big green feeder so Thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you soon. Girl. Looking shaggy. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to finish.